Hey guys, welcome back. Ashley D. Will here, author, teacher, life coach. Today we're going to look at a post on my blog. It's ashleydwill.wordpress.com and the name of the post is Put Off the Flesh. So this should be interesting and maybe give you some ideas and insight into what is going on with some of the issues you may be facing. Putting off the flesh is mentioned in the book of Colossians chapter 2, in particular verse 11, where it talks about in Jesus Christ, we believers were circumcised with a circumcision not performed by human hands. Our whole self, ruled by the flesh, was put off when we were circumcised by Christ. So in this spiritual circumcision, our flesh has already been removed in the spirit. This has already taken place. This is how we are the new nature. This is how and what happened when we were born again and transferred from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. So this is old news. This is done and finished in the spirit. In the space-time dimension in which we live, though, we are learning about this and we are desiring to line ourselves up with this truth by drawing near to the Lord, believing His Word, surrendering to Him, laying down things that are in the way, etc. So that is where this title comes from. So when we put off the flesh, it's kind of like saying, take off your clothes. When, it taught, when the scripture talks about put on the Lord Jesus Christ, it's a type of expression like saying, get dressed. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Get dressed. Don't walk around with no clothes on. Go put your clothes on. You are the new nature, so go get dressed in your robe of righteousness. It's hanging right there in your closet. In fact, you never needed to take it off when you went to bed last night. You can wear it for the rest of your life. The mentality and the expression here is one of putting on clothes, getting dressed, and taking off clothes, getting undressed. So the point would be take off your grave clothes because you're not the unregenerate nature anymore. Put on your robe of righteousness because you are the new nature. That is the context in which this is written. So some tips for putting off the flesh. Number one, renew your mind. Often in the Word of God. The scriptures are your only offensive weapon and your only life compass. References here are Romans 2.12, which says, Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but be a new and different person with a fresh newness in all you do and think. Then you will learn from your own experience how God's ways will really satisfy you. In Ephesians 4.23, now your attitudes and thoughts must all be constantly changing for the better or always being renewed. So you want to ask God to align your life and heart with Him. You do this by surrendering your life and heart to Him and learning how to submit to Him and walk in His yoke every day. Psalm 86, 11 says, May every fiber of my being unite in reverence to your name. That is one of my favorite prayers. Another tip for putting off the flesh, for number one, renewing your mind, is to realize and pray for this realization that the only life you have available to you is the resurrection life of Jesus Christ that is living inside of you as the new nature, you being born again into Christ. That is the only life that you have. It is only Jesus Christ who can and will live the Christian life for you and through you when you agree to get out of the way, when you agree to stop trying to be God, when you agree 
to stop shutting down everything he's trying to do. That is a huge tip because we can interfere in major ways so often with what the Holy Spirit wants to do. Those of us who have been through trauma, this tendency can be very strong to rescue people, to prevent danger, to intervene in situations. And of course, sometimes it is a great idea. If a little toddler is wandering out into the street, you know, we're gonna go grab him. But on a lesser scale in relationships and different things, we need to learn discernment as to when to step in and when not to, when to speak and when not to. Second tip for putting off the flesh would be, like I mentioned before, get dressed, put on the new nature. The good news and the best news in the Christian message is that when you come to Christ and you receive him as your Lord and Savior and you believe him and you want to follow him, you already are the new nature right now if you belong to Christ. Ephesians 4.24, yes, you must be a new and different person, holy and good. Clothe yourself with this new nature. That means believe this and get in step with it. Get dressed with it. 1 Peter 3, 4 says, Be beautiful inside, in your hearts, with the lasting charm of a gentle and quiet spirit that is so precious to God. In Galatians 5, 16, I advise you to obey only the Holy Spirit's instructions. He will tell you where to go and what to do, and then you won't always be doing the wrong things your evil nature wants you to do. So those are some scriptures that dovetail with the idea of putting on the new nature, getting dressed in the garment that Christ has purchased for you. So you want to believe in your heart that you really are the new nature, and this is not coming from anything you've done or said or any evidence of anything at all in your own life. It is only by looking at Christ and his supernatural power and the fact that you have faith in it that is what you believe in, and that is how you believe it and internalize it. Because he has purchased your soul inside and out, head to toe, birth to death, and he has placed you inside of himself, inside of himself forever, provided you stay in the faith. So throughout the day, you're going to want to remember who you are in Christ. This is a comprehensive identity, it is a perfect identity, and it is an eternal identity. You want to attach emotionally to Christ, very much so, and identify with him. Identify with his humanity. He was 100% human when he was here. Identify with his crucifixion, because you were crucified in him. Identify with his death, because in Christ you died in him and identify with his resurrection life. His resurrection life is you as the new nature. You were raised to life in him when he rose from the dead. When you remember who you are, you'll know what to do in the particular situation. Ephesians 6, 10 through 18 shows us how to get dressed. It shows us how to put on the new nature, right? And notice that we are never instructed to remove the armor or to remove the robe of righteousness or to take off the new nature. We're never instructed to do that. So I would encourage you to get comfortable with the new nature, your, the idea of yourself being the new nature. Get comfortable wearing the armor and get very comfortable wearing the robe of righteousness because it is the real you now. Those garments belong on you and they fit perfectly. Moving on, you are not sin and you are not flesh. Romans 7:17 7, 
8, 9, and John 6, 63 are important here. Romans 7, 17 says, It is not I who is doing wrong, but it is the sin that lives inside me. Romans 8, 9 tells us that we are in the realm of the Spirit now because we are in Christ. We are not in the flesh anymore, remember, because it has been circumcised off of you in totality in the Spirit. So discovering what has already happened in the Spirit, which is the real dwelling now, will help you to bring that reality into the space-time dimension by faith. John 6.63 talks about how the flesh profits nothing. No matter what form it takes, no matter how much of an angel of light it appears to be, it profits nothing. So that is telling us that it is absolutely worthless. So you are not sin and you are not flesh. Those are cellular memories that are recorded in your nerves and muscles and they play the unregenerate tapes by default. Those tapes are always going to be playing and they're never going to stop. Those tapes are in tune with the vibe of the enemy and the world system. The cellular memories, those tapes, want us to believe that they are who we are. But they are not. They are only shadows of the unregenerate nature which was already crucified. Colossians 2.11 We having free will, being in Christ, we can easily play truth tapes on top of them to drown them out because the new nature loves and walks in truth. So however you want to be, however you want to think, you can speak those things to yourself. You can play those tapes in your mind. Wherever your mind is focused, that is where the rest of you will follow. Number three tip for putting off the flesh is deal with unbelief by unzipping your soul in honesty and vulnerability with God. Get real with the tough stuff, guys. Psalm 56.1 says, Lord, have mercy on me. All day long, the enemy troops press in. So many are proud to fight against me. How they long to conquer me. So you want to lift up your unbelief to the Lord and ask him to replace it with faith. God can handle you in any problem you face. Don't make the problem bigger than it is by focusing on the problem and making the Lord seem like he's small and uninvolved and in the background. You want to focus on the Lord so he will be big as he is in reality and the problem that you have will seem smaller, which is closer to reality. Don't hesitate to pour out your heart like water before the Lord, Lamentations 2.19, and replace the lies in your soul with the truth of God's word. Number four tip is to discharge hindrances. We do this by participation in community of confession and healing prayer. This is very powerful. James 5.16 is a very powerful verse of scripture. It says, Confess, therefore, your sins, faults, and struggles to one another, and pray for one another, so that you may be healed. The healing is the goal. And so we want to confess our sins to one another so that they can pray for us. And we can have a fellow struggler bonded with us in our struggle. And then we can likewise pray for them. Remember that all of your issues, every single one, is common to man. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. And... They simply point to your need for God. Your issues, your problems, the sins you may struggle with, are not who you are. Don't let them become in your mind your identity. Your identity is only in Christ. You can use a boundary there. 
Also, biblically-based transformation prayer permanently removes subconscious lies that hinder your growth. I have shared lies that I believed as a child, such as, I am worthless, I am powerless, I am helpless, and I must suffer. And through transformation prayer ministry, those four lies were removed permanently in all of the pain and chaos resulting from those four lies in my life have been removed permanently. So that is a powerful ministry. Always stay connected to the safe body of believers. People you can trust, people you can be real with, people you can be authentic with. Consider meeting with a deliverance minister if necessary. They can prove to be lifesavers. Some hindrances are too big for us to handle. And when you go to a deliverance ministry, you can be set free. Number five tip for putting off the flesh is to meditate on relevant verses that touch your heart and speak to you in your situation. You want to breathe the word of God like air, Psalm 1-2. This will rewire your brain this is scientifically proven, and I am a living testimony to this. The Lord's Word has rewired my brain, absolutely. Things you can meditate on or say to yourself over and over again in the back of your mind to keep you on track. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the cross. Thank you for the cross. God is my refuge. God is my refuge. God's got this. God's got this. So whatever the verse or the phrase would be, let the Holy Spirit guide you in that. And these types of meditations can stabilize you. You want to live daily under the shadow of the Most High, Psalm 91.1, and you want to rely on the Lord more and more moment by moment, for strength and peace and direction and to provide everything that you need. So number six tip is to remember the inside-out principle. The heart must be touched and healed before any behavior will naturally change. So you want to submit your heart in trust to God and to His safe, authentic believers in various healing ministries, such as Cross Current or Living Waters, maybe AA, or wherever he leads you. So trust his leading and be patient with yourself. Ask the Lord to take over your heart and heal it so that you can do his will. Everything flows from that posture of heart submission. Proverbs 4.23 tells us above all else to guard our hearts. That is so very important. Number seven, ask, seek, knock. Ask for what you really need from the Lord and from other people. Seek the Lord's presence and his wisdom. Knock and keep on knocking, Matthew 7, 8. Take a spiritual gifts test to learn what your heavenly gifts are and ask the Lord to lead you where, when, and how you are to use them. Then do what he tells you to do. Number eight, use boundaries with yourself and with other people. You are separate from other people, and that is a good thing. Separateness enables you to do the will of God. Use internal boundaries with yourself. In other words, when appropriate, tell yourself no. I tell myself no, I'm not going to eat a half of a chocolate cake. That was my issue, is sugar addiction. So I've learned to tell myself no in many ways. Use healthy boundaries with other people to protect yourself from their flesh and further wounding, especially for those of you who are healing still. My boundaries playlist on this channel might be a helpful place to start. Your God-given sacred space is the only place in the world where you will do the will of God. You can heal and grow as much as you want for the rest of your life. 
Release excess in your life for more streamlined purpose and power. Number nine tip for putting off the flesh. This is very important. Give yourself grace and truth and plenty of time, meaning the rest of your life. Frame your life, your whole life, in God's grace. Forgive yourself as God does. The sooner you do it, the better, and the more deeply you do it, the better. Be gracious with yourself as God is with you. Keep your perspective by keeping your focus on Christ. You are in a lifetime process. Ecclesiastes 3.11 Slow down. One day at a time. Matthew 6.34 And then tip number 10 for putting off the flesh is worship the Lord. Worship and praise aligns you with God's purposes. It puts demons to flight, it puts lies to flight, and it opens the door to breakthroughs and victory. Learn to live delighting yourself in the Lord and living in a state of worship. Psalm 37, 4 and 29, 2. Expect attacks from the enemy. Expect them. You are in a down and dirty battle. God uses the attacks to grow you stronger and smarter. Plan what you'll do next time to change the game. Psalm 37, 4 says, Be delighted with the Lord, then he will give you all your heart's desires. And Psalm 29, 2 says, Praise him for his majestic glory, the glory of his name. Come before him clothed in sacred garments. The Lord loves it when we put on the garments that he has provided for us. That is part of being a living sacrifice, and that is part of our reasonable worship, is by putting off the flesh and putting on the new nature. So... Romans 12.2, I have some verses down here at the bottom. Um, Romans 12.2, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Ephesians 4.23, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Psalm 56.1, your desire is for truth in the inner parts. 2 Corinthians 5.17 Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Colossians 3.10 And have put on the new man who is renewed in knowledge according to the image of him who created him. Ephesians 4.24 in that you put on the new man, which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. 1 Peter 3, 4, Rather, let it be the hidden person of the heart with the incorruptible beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is very precious in the sight of God. Galatians six fifteen, For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything but a new creation. So that verse is telling us that a new creation avails everything. But what we do with our hands, the works of our hands, are worthless. They don't accomplish anything. James 5.16, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another so that you may be healed. Psalm 1.2, but his delight is in the law of the Lord and in his law he meditates day and night. Proverbs 4.23, above everything else, guard your heart. For everything you do flows from it, and that is where Christ lives inside you, in your inner man. Matthew 7.8, for everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks it will be opened.
Ecclesiastes 3.11, he has made everything beautiful in its time. Give him the time to make whatever your issue is beautiful because that is what he will naturally do as you keep trusting him. Matthew 6.34, therefore take no thought about tomorrow, for tomorrow will take thought about the things of itself. Sufficient to the day is the trouble thereof. Don't worry about tomorrow. You can make your plans, but focus on the present moment, listening to the Holy Spirit in that moment, and let him handle everything in regards to the future. Psalm 29, 2, ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. In Psalm 37, 4, take delight in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. So that is a look at putting off the flesh. I hope that something I've said was helpful and I pray that you would draw near to the Lord, believe his word, and believe that he has made you the new nature. This is your supernatural gift from heaven in the new birth that you've experienced by the faith he has given you to believe what he has done. So I pray God's blessing on everyone today. I pray God's will be done in your life and I pray that you will surrender more and more territory to him so that he can fill your life and your heart to the full. And I pray this all in Jesus' name. You guys have a blessed day, and I'll see you soon.